student government body, it's actually below 10%. It is below 10%, yet the top household names in this country began the leadership journey from the university. Look at any, whether it's uh, Honorable Anyang Nyongo, whether it's even, uh, you know, the Bazimio party leader, whether it's even the Kenya Kwanza, uh, part, uh, you know, like a party leader. Look at all the top household names in this country, the Orangos of this world. They began their leadership journey back in the university. Mm -hmm. Yet, at the university, we can't even talk about the two-thirds gender rule because it's below 10%, because we've done that research at Badili Africa. And even when we're trying to push young women to run for the student president position, very few women put themselves, you know, like avail and present themselves to actually run for the student body uh, president. Uh, I mean, Nairobi University, how many years has it taken to even have the first student female president? How many years has it taken? Mm -hmm. And then when you look at across the country, so if you're not even able to see yourself as a leader in the university, then it becomes even challenging participating in national politics because national politics are way brutal. Like I said, I participated in, in national politics. They are mm -hmm. way, way brutal, mm -hmm. right? And even some of the challenges we're discussing in the national politics, they manifest themselves even in the student body politics. And I'm sure uh, he can also um, confirm that. Mm -hmm. Whether we're talking about violence, whether we're talking about bribery, whether we're talking about ability to articulate how you're going to represent the other students' ability to understand what other students are going through, they still manifest themselves in the student government body. So if we don't cab it there, mm -hmm. yet these are the people who are actually coming to our mainstream politics, then I think we still have a very, very long way um, to go. Again, currently, there is no political party or even coalition that is also prioritizing the issue of gender-based violence. You can ima imagine we are spending so much, even in terms of uh, mitigating and managing gender-based violence. We don't even have enough safe houses, you know, that are government-sponsored across the country. We actually have two. Statistics tell us that especially a woman will have been assaulted before they get to 15 years. Global statistics talk about one in three women, women has been assaulted, but there's no one who's actually making it an agenda. We're talking about supporting, uh, you know, 50% of the population who are women. Yet, gender-based violence even undermines your ability to contribute productively, whether it is at work, you know, whether it's even uh, taking care of your child, whether it's even going to school, right? Mm -hmm. So you can actually tell when it comes to priorities um, and also how we also view things through a masculine lens, and that is why we're not even prioritizing most of these things. Gender-based violence is a big issue, and we even saw it like shoot up during COVID-19. We're talking about right now that uh, the COVID-19 cases have, be have begun rising, but still, there's no party leader, there's no political party, there's no coalition that is talking about how we're going to ensure we actually curb gender-based violence because mm -hmm. it's undermining the ability of this demographic to actually contribute to growing the economy of this nation. And, and, uh, and, Doc, there's something that we, were, we had been talking about and looking at what DPP has just talked about is that from what he has just read for the, like, five, ten minutes that he... Uh, the, the, the speech he has read gives a lot of confidence. You, you hear Maseno talked about uh, she feels a little bit more comfortable with what the, the ODPP has talked about. But looking at what we were talking about just before we started the show is that we have very good laws, but the implementation is the issue. Yes. You remember NCIC came up with a list of uh, shame. They has come up with a list of names, a, a list of words that you're not supposed to use mm -hmm. uh, when you're talking about anything <laughs> on politics. But at the end of the day, Kenyans are not just satisfied with just telling us what you will do. People want to see boots on the ground. Yeah. Um, uh, before I make a comment um, uh, to what you have just referred to, uh, let me weigh in in uh, what Maseno was saying uh, about uh, uh, university student politics. Mm -hmm. uh, partially because um, I have spent all my life uh, working at university level and working with young people even not at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I ran Utali College uh, for, for, for seven years as a CEO. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I have not done anything other than dealing with students and young yes. people. Mm -hmm. Spent much of my life with the University of Nairobi. You see, our public institution, uh, University of Nairobi included, uh, they are actually a microcosm of what the Kenyan society uh, is. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially, what you see in our politics uh, out here is mm -hmm. extended to the politics, student politics mm -hmm. in the university. Mm -hmm. 
and hence the dominance mm -hmm. of uh, uh, men mm -hmm. in university student uh, politics for years. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's for the first time mm -hmm. that uh, in the University of Nairobi, we had a lady as a student, uh, as, as, a, as, uh, as uh, uh, the, 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 the chair of UNSA. Uh, University of Nairobi Students Association, which was previously SONU, mm -hmm. for the first time in the 50 years that the University of Nairobi has, mm -hmm. has existed. Yes. Wow. 50, yes. uh, 50, 50 years. years. Uh, that bespeaks mm -hmm. of what we are seeing mm -hmm. in the nation, that after 59 years of being independent, <laughs> it is now that we are celebrating uh, the nomination of a woman, uh, a serious nomination of a woman uh, as a debut president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we can pride ourselves and say we are doing much better. As I was saying the other day, mm -hmm. it took America two, uh, more than 200 years uh, to reach where we have reached in, in, in just 59 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't done very well. Yes. So that is exactly what happens also in the university setting. Mm -hmm. It is a man-only affair. Mm -hmm. And as you said, if you look at history, uh, the University of Nairobi particularly, has been a very fertile ground mm -hmm. where leaders hone their skills in those early uh, stages mm -hmm. of, of life. Mm -hmm. Name them, uh, you know, James Orengo, mm -hmm. uh, the more recent uh, Pabu Owino. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just name the key politicians that we have. You will actually find their traces uh, to the back to the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. If not in active uh, political, quote unquote, politics, mm -hmm. some of them, uh, like um, uh, the, 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 the Kenya Kwanzaa presidential candidate, mm -hmm. uh, was actually a leader in the Christian Union uh, uh, in, in, in our days uh -huh. as a students of the University of Nairobi. So, so they many, traced a lot uh, many of the them university. that you see in the politics now, mm -hmm. if they were not in the politics of the university, they had core politics. Mm -hmm. Some of them were running many, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 non-political institutions mm -hmm. at those leadership uh, positions. Mm -hmm. Or that, even that, hold governance, like Oceani. Uh, uh, like Oceani. Yes, uh, yes. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Men of us who are leaders, uh, uh, you know, I, I was a leader of the Seven Day Adventist group in the University of Nairobi and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, now that is where mm -hmm. what Nur Nun Haji was saying becomes important. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we can celebrate that they are having uh, a multi agency training for election preparedness mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, at the Kenya School of Government. Uh, but uh, if, 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 if you permitted me some latitude, I would say uh, that's a little bit too little too late. Mm -hmm. Very the, this training mm -hmm. could have come two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, coming uh, just a couple of weeks to elections, uh, which preparedness are you going to do? Because the few weeks that we are remaining with denies yeah. you the long-term view and approach of, mm -hmm. of issues that will allow you to be more preemptive than being reactive. No, no wonder then, the way we have handled uh, election violence is actually more reactionary uh, than uh, 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 being proactive. Uh, History is replete with very clear examples that teach us that handling violence works well when you go preventive mm -hmm. uh, than going reactionally. Mm -hmm. The old adage says uh, prevention is better than cure. True. We are always into curing. Mm -hmm. People are rioting. We unleash the police on them. They have a few rungus on their heads, and we think we have solved the problem. Mm -hmm. Far from it. Okay. Mm. This training, uh -huh. the should meeting that is going on yes. in the, at the Kenya School of Government, it mm. could have come two years ago. To look forward, uh, you know, 600 days ahead of the elections, what do we expect? How do we prevent it from happening? How do we map the country, mm -hmm. uh, what they are now calling uh, uh, trouble uh, spots? Is it trouble spots or what? Hot spots, mm -hmm. uh, which for me is that amount to a, some kind of ethnic profiling. Mm -hmm. We could have done better in laboring uh, some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be helpful, uh, but in so far as reactionary approach uh, to prevent uh, to, to dealing with violence is concerned, what yes. we need is prevention. Mm -hmm. Okay, Masen. Um, you know, b I hope also one, one of the things they're going to uh, consider is because um, uh, in 2017 there was data collected mm -hmm. from the situation rooms that, uh, that were set up. 
And uh, most of the time, it's because we haven't even had any prosecutions, because we've had cases. Even uh, human rights of organ organizations have documented. So we actually have enough data and enough cases to even begin uh, prosecution. So it would be important also, in, uh, you know, um, find out how they've gone actually about uh, those cases. Um, and then I think I just wanted to just speak briefly about what you had asked me about uh, civic education. You know, mm. right now, even with uh, voter apathy and people feeling like they are tired, and um, you know, like even at Badili Africa, we are, mm. even today, we're actually mm. having a social vetting uh, event in the, uh, I mean, activity in uh, different constituencies, you know, in Madare, in Kawangware, in uh, Mbakasi Central. Mm -hmm. And you find people actually know the president they want to vote for, but they're not even sure about the MCA. They're not even sure about the MP they want to vote for. They, you know, they, they don't have that understanding in terms of who are the MCAs who are going to be on the ballot? Who are the MPs who are going to be on the ballot? Because at the end of the day, even what he mentioned, at the end of the day, they're going to determine the quality of life you're going to live in your community, right? Mm -hmm. So even when someone says, oh, you know, I'm not going to vote because it's been rigged, you mm -hmm. ask them, um, your MCA, was, were they rigged in the last election? They don't even know who the MCA is. You mm -hmm. ask them, was your MP rigged in the last election? They don't even know who their MP is. You know, because today, if uh, we lose money for CDF, to blame the president, you know, if, you know, if, if someone uh, the, uh, misappropriates the funds that are in the uh, CDF um, uh, kitty. So I think even when it comes to um, civic education, it's very, very important for citizens to actually be aware of the different mandates of the elective seats that are going to be on the ballot this year and to understand that it's as important for me to show up with an understanding of mm -hmm. which member of county assembly am i going to uh, elect mm -hmm. which member of parliament which governor mm -hmm. you know because the governor is like a small president of that county at the yes. end of the day mm -hmm. right but just um, showing up and uh, you're like you know what maybe i'm going to vote for the president i'm, I'm just inter interested in the presidency I mean, there are so, there's so much that goes into improving, you know, the quality of services and the quality of life that you're supposed uh, to enjoy in this country. Yes, and, 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 and uh, as you add that, uh, Doc, let me pick your minds on this. We are talking about, when you talk about leadership, integrity, corruption, chapter six, listening to all the candidates, including our presidential candidates, their running mates, looking at our leaders, is L corruption a matter of leadership because we are the same same people who put these people we shouldn't be talking every time when a politician talks about is corruption chapter six we are good is it about leadership doc um well uh, th 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 there is a sense in which uh, all these things boil down to leadership if you ask me mm -hmm. uh there's a saying from one of the communities in the country which goes that um fish rots from the head. Uh, part of the challenge we have grappled with in our political history is the nature of political leadership that we have had. And uh, in our continent alone, uh, we have very good examples of leaders who have come and put their foot down and changed their countries overnight. I have uh, uh, a classic example of um, uh, Major General Mtala Mohammed of Nigeria. Uh, within one year, he has changed. He had changed Nigeria from what it was known to, to something else, mm -hmm. and that disappeared with uh, mm -hmm. uh, w w with him. There, there is a role of uh, 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 leadership in all this, but what we are lacking in Africa is um, institutionalizing certain values mm -hmm. that hold our leaders into account. Ours is more of personality politics, personality leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Michuki, uh, Honorable Michuki comes in with his stern way of doing things, mm -hmm. makes every Kenyan get into a seat belt mm -hmm. in a vehicle, controls matatus, mm -hmm. and when he leaves the Ministry of Transport, everything goes back to where it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What that tells us is that um, what we need more mm -hmm. is we need institutions mm -hmm. as opposed to people more. Mm -hmm. So that if it is in in there, the system will work as effectively as it was when Kenneth Mbongi was there mm -hmm. or when Maseno was there. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what we, uh, we, we are missing. Mm -hmm. And what is making us miss this mm -hmm. is actually uh, the disconnect 
mm -hmm. uh, between the many laws and regulations that we have mm -hmm. and the lack of implementation of those laws to create the inst institutions mm -hmm. that stand the test of time in directing us. So the leader we need now is one who will create the uh, will start the tradition of actually creating institutions mm -hmm. and 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 when i look at the crop of leaders like now at the level of uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 president mm -hmm. there, there are some of them who give hope because when you look at their history that there are men and women who have fought for what is right over a long period of time mm -hmm. and and we can pin them down and tell them that in 1980 you stood for this. Mm -hmm. In 1985 you stood for this. In 1990 you stood for this. Uh, what do you stand uh, for now? Okay. So, so, so that gives hope to, uh, to, 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 to the country. But what we need more is create institutions that are functional. And that's what we are missing. <laughs> Masano, do you concur we need to have institutions as strong as that? Because it's, it's quite a good idea such that we've seen leaders, when they exit office, that dies with uh, the exi exit from office. Yeah, I think we have also institutions, but also who's manning those institutions, you know, is uh, very, very critical. Because, you know, we are always forming commissions. We are always, you know, like, we are always just coming up with uh, extra, right? We have institutions, but then who's manning those institutions? And I think, number one, let's just call it theft, not even corruption. Theft, mm -hmm. wheezy, you know, theft of, uh, uh, you know, like public resources. Mm -hmm. But again... Um, there's even no political cost to you actually even just stealing those, uh, you know, um, uh, public resources because you don't even lose your seat. I mean, look at the people who are actually running for office in this election. Like everyone has like, uh, you know, okay, majority rather um, that are, are especially going for the top seat. They have cases that are still either pending in court or allegations or they haven't even been cleared. Why are we even allowing leaders to run for office and they have not been cleared? You know, if you're still being investigated, mm -hmm. I don't think you should be given an opportunity to actually run for office if you're still being investigated, right? Just wait, let's finish the investigations, then you can actually be, uh, be cleared to run for office. Because at the end of the day, the fact that even uh, we have leaders who steal public resources and inject them back to, um, you know, uh, to elections to bribe voters, they make it so costly for even young people to run for office. Mm -hmm. We're talking about majority of the young people in this country not even employed. In fact, the bulk of the independent uh, candidates, actually young people who are not even able to be given, uh, you know, tickets by the political party because they're even looking at you as dead weight. You're not even bringing any uh, money to mm -hmm. the political party. Um, I think last week there was actually data in the newspaper <laughs> over, over the weekend. We have about 16,000 candidates running for political office across all the different positions. And it's only 4,000 who are actually young people. The mm -hmm. youth are only 4,000. And I bet you of the 4,000, 10% are, are young women. So you can imagine even how costly it actually is to run for office, you know. Because mm -hmm. where do you actually get some of the money that some of the money that actually people are injecting in this particular election to bribe uh, you know like to bribe voters so in part of level, level uh, like leveling the playing ground is ensuring that mm -hmm. it's so costly i mean it's uh, like uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. like you streamline and, uh, and and ensure that you're not actually allowed you know uh, to run for a public office if you have integrity and character related uh, mm -hmm. uh, cases mm -hmm. leveled against you. Yeah, uh, perhaps I can pick Even your mind on that. Add, uh, yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. I also wanted you to pick your mind on uh, this aspect is that um, a Krigler report talked about a year to General Pauls. Everything is just be the final touches, but uh, we are still see the DPP is doing the last minute. The last minute, 20, 20, nine, actually it's 19 days mm. to the General Pauls. Mm. Uh, IBC had a simulation exercise yesterday. The courts did rule about uh, a, a presidential candidate last week. The timelines, the timelines, we are not working with the timelines. But, but the report see, was made quite a long time. Uh, but you see, when I knew, uh, that is typically us. The last minutes. Kenyans. But we, election we, matters, it's a life and death situation. Uh, that's in fine, Kenya. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, all this is organized by Kenyans, all this is implemented by Kenyans. Uh, in our uh, political ethos uh, DNA mm -hmm. is actually last minute. Uh, what am I saying? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to find a way mm -hmm. of getting involved 
as individuals in shaping the political ethos, uh, the, 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 the political culture mm -hmm. in, in our country. By culture here, I mean our way of doing uh, doing things. Okay. Let me ask you, I, I know in Jue we are here so okay. that you ask us questions, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, accept that the hunter sometimes becomes the hunted. Mm -hmm. uh, do you live here in Nairobi? Yes, I do. Do you know your MCA in the mm -hmm. area where you live? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Then you are one among the many Kenyans. Mm -hmm. if, if you asked many Kenyans uh, who live in Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, who their chief is, who their assistant chief is, who the MCA is, they don't know. I, I was addressing some meeting yesterday. Okay. I live in the Parklands area of Nairobi. Uh, yeah, we need to pick up the pace. Uh, yeah, yes, we are, we are finishing. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned the name of uh, MCA, uh, 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 Jane Lamalde. And uh, somebody asked me, what, what did you just say? And, and that's my neighbor. Mm. Oh, okay. That is where, in my view, the rubber meets the road. Kenyans need to get involved. We need to More begin to have us. questions, uh, to ask yeah. questions. As we wind up. Mm. No, I think for me, um, you know, like uh, b b my closing remarks, um, and I always like to remind people, even in our Badili Africa events, mm. uh, is that, you know, the most important office in this country is not the office of the president, is not the office of the governor, the MCA, the MP, the women rep. The most important office is the office of the citizen. And it's because we're even failing in occupying our office as a citizen, in understanding our rights. Very few citizens even understand Article 43 in terms of what you, ent what you are entitled to, access to better health care, good sanitation, you know, good education, even just because you cannot claim a right you're not even aware about, you know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hold a leader accountable if you don't even know their mandates you know, like what they're supposed to do once they occupy office. It's hard to hold them and tell them, you know, this promise you're making is actually false. We have some of our Chama women mm -hmm. who are, you know, who are campaigning for political leader right now, who's a senator, and is promising them bursaries. I sat them down, I said, this is not even within his mandate, you know. Mm. He's promising you bursary, and you're like, this is now you because I'm not part of bursary. I'm like, People no. don't even know. That's what I'm saying. You see, so how are you going to hold someone accountable if you don't even understand their mandate? And that's mm. why I'm saying the most important office is the office of the citizen. You must understand what you're ent entitled to, mm -hmm. to actually be able mm -hmm. to run it effectively, you know, like as a citizen, and hold your leaders accountable. And not just your elected leaders, even those who are appointed. Mm -hmm. And actually from the Nyumbakumi, because we don't even speak about the Nyumbakumi, mm -hmm. and have such an influence in the community, you know? We don't even talk about them. So to even hold that Nyumbakumi person accountable, to hold your chief accountable, you know, at the yeah. end of the day, at all the levels. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, Doc, we are out of time, uh, but I can give you 30 seconds, final remarks. Uh, that was the essence of devolution. Mm -hmm. Get people to be involved in the way they are governed. Thank you so much. Well put, uh, Dr. Ken Ombongi, who is a senior lecturer and chairman department of history and archaeology at the University of Nairobi. And we also had Bina Maseno, who is a leadership and governance expert. We were looking at the state of politics and more or less on leadership, governance, and also accountability. On the second hour, we are still looking at matters politics, and I will be joined by two other political uh, analysts and governance experts who will be talking about well, the debate. The debate is still there and the campaign trail. What do you need in a campaign? Money? Yes. And lots and lots of uh, people to listen to your agendas. Well, is that it? We're going to be looking at that when we come back. This is KBC. Let's, take a, let's have a short break. Thank you.